Hey guys, it's Andrew again from Aloha Quails. Today we're going to take a look at building some new quail cages. Um, at the moment, a large majority of my quails are inside an aviary or a run or um, a pen. Um, it's roofed in, it's 10 feet by 6 feet. And I have about 40 or 50 quails in there. Um, it's not a very efficient use of the space. And we have a poop problem. Um, 40 quails produce a poop ton of poop. Um, what we have on the floor is sand. I have about 300 pounds of sand in there. And that was doing a really good job of absorbing the moisture out of the poop and drying it out. Um, but because I only live on a 3,300 square foot lot, I don't have a place where I can really clean that sand on a regular basis and not contaminate my whole yard. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be getting rid of that sand. Um, I haven't quite worked out what I'm going to do with it yet, but it's going to go somewhere. Um, I'm sure somebody somewhere out there has a use for it. And what I'm going to be doing is changing it over to the same as my breeding cages and using a tray method to catch, catch the poop. Um, so we're going to line it with newspaper, they poop on that, and then we'll just change that out every day to keep the smell down. Um, and for now, that's going to be trashed um, until I find a way to process that into a dry product, which hopefully I can sell. Um, I've been using plastic dog trays in some of my other cages and somebody turned me on to these. These are oil drip pans. Um, basically you put them in your garage on the floor underneath your car and if your car drips or leaks any fluids it's supposed to drip on here instead of damaging your floor and staining your garage floor. Um, these measure 47 by 25 inches which means that essentially I can have a four foot by two foot cage using each one of these trees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a stacking unit of these cages, um, each one being approximately four feet by two feet. Um, it's going to be a build out of wood, these trays are going to slide under each cage and I'm going to have three tiers. Um, in that sort of spacing it means I can keep a lot more quails um, than I can inside the six foot by four foot pen, sorry, six foot by ten foot pen that I have right now. Um, if this works out, it means that I can get a double set of these cages in there, so I'll be able to have two sets of three sets of cages. So give me a six total cages, um, which should put the number of quills that I can keep in there into the hundreds instead of into the tens. Um, so this is going to be really, really efficient to make. Um, I did cut some wood already, uh, I did my whole intro and everything and uh, my microphone wasn't switched on. Everything you need to build this quail cage minus the trays, the trays you can get at Walmart, they run from $10 to $15 depending on where you are in the country, um, you can get at Home Depot. So all the wood you can get at Home Depot, you can get all your screws at Home Depot, you can get all your wire mesh and uh, hardware cloth at Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever hardware store is near you. Um, it's a real, real simple build. So what you're going to need is four pieces of 2x2 two two cut to 6 foot. You're going to need eight pieces of 2x2 two two cut to 47 and a half inches. This is going to be your left to right. You're going to need eight pieces of 2x2 two two cut to 19 inches. This is going to be your back to front. For the egg rollout tree you are going to need six pieces of one by two and this one is cut to 23 inches you're going to need six pieces of one by two cut to 47 and a half inches and that's going to be the front and the back of the egg rollout tree and then you're going to need nine pieces of two by one cut to 19 inches as well and this is going to be for the poop trays to sit on so i'll put all of those dimensions down below just so you can uh, read them um and i'll correct any mistakes that i might have made i don't think i did um once you cut all those pieces if you have a chop saw it should take you about 10 minutes to cut everything um your hardware store might cut it for you if you take in your cut list and just say hey i need this um a lot of them charge maybe 50 cents per cut it might cost you 10 to 20 dollars to have all of these pieces cut for you um, but if you don't have a chop saw it, it's going to be worth it to maybe do that you could make this with hand tools um, but the amount of labor is just going to be through the roof and it's going to suck um, so let me get these pieces set out i'll show you how you put them all together and 
you know, this is a quick build. This will take me maybe an hour to finish. Okay, guys, so I screwed together the first two sections. Um, that's the ends. So that's the 60 inch pieces and the 19 inch pieces. Um, there's two of them here, they're just stacked on top of each other. So I spaced those out so the distance between the top one and this one is 12 inches. And then from beneath it to the top of this one is 12 inches. And then from beneath this one to this one is 12 inches. So that gives me the space that I need for the three trays to go in. Um, so real, real simple. Uh, just 12 inch spaces between each of the sidebars. So I'm going to go ahead and screw in the next section and I'll show you what I do after I've done it. Okay, guys, as you can see, we've got it standing up now. Um, so it's six feet tall and these are spaced out every 12 inches so i have room for three cages so all i did was i just screwed in the cross reams the ones that are 47 and a half um this is where the drip trees will sit um there's going to be some cross beams across here and then i'm going to put in the egg rollout tree with the wire mesh for the bottom so let me go ahead and do that and then i'll show you what the next steps are Okay, so we got the 19 inch 2x1 screwed in place. Um, I just spaced those out evenly inside the frame. Um, and that is what the waste pan is going to sit on. And then I also screwed together the egg trays. So we have one, two, three. So this is going to be the floor of the cage and the roll down tray. Um, so my next step is to staple onto this half inch hardware cloth. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then. I'm going to install them into the cage and I'll show you what that looks like and give you the measurements for that, okay? So I'm ready to make the egg trays. Um, this is also going to be the floor of the cage. It's going to have a half inch hardware cloth underneath it. Um, putting these together is real, real simple. I have right here a Craig or Craig jig. Um, it's a pocket hole jig and all it does is allows me to drill pocket holes. Um, and it, all you do is you line it up at the end, you use the drill bit that's supplied with it with the blocker on it, you drill down and it makes two pocket holes, which means that the screws are hidden, it doesn't split your wood. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill these and then I'll show you what it looks like after. Um, back with you in a second. We're in one go. Um, it's very, very clean. It means that I don't have screws sticking out inside the cage, everything's recessed. So I'm gonna go ahead and put together the three catcher trees and then uh, show you how we install those okay so we're back so now you can see we've got our three egg rollout trees one two and three um, you can also see that the pans fit in perfectly and they sit on those runners right there so they just slide in and out so the next step is to add your hardware cloth or your wire mesh um, for me I have a roll of six foot tall chicken wire that I'm going to use to do the sides and the back and then I'm going to add one by one mesh to the front and that's where I'm going to put my doors my feeders and waterers okay real quickly um, before I forget I missed a step um, so I'm just coming back to let you guys know the spacing at the back of the cage between the shelf for the tree and the egg roller this space here is three inches at the back and then at the front all I did was I put a piece of two by two in here so this is one and a half inches at the front so three inches at the back one and a half inches at the front that gives you a one and a half inch roll that's the perfect amount of roll for your eggs to come down to the front so as you can see I've got my chicken wire stapled on um, I stapled it all along the side I stapled it onto the tray so I've pulled it in tight just so that no quills can get between the tray and the wire and then I've stapled it all along the back and the other side so the next step is to cut the wire from the front and I'll show you how I do that okay guys this part's real simple um, we're just making the mesh that's gonna go along the front this is going to have your door in it, it's going to have your feeder and it's going to have your water in it. It's going to be 49 inches across by 10 inches deep. Um, typically these rolls come in 24 inches, so from this we're going to make two rows. So we're going to actually make th uh, four total. The extra one I'll just keep until I build another set of cages. 
Um, so what we're gonna do is count out 49 squares and cut there. And then we're gonna split that into two 10 inch sections. When you're making those 10 inch sections, you're gonna count 10 from this side and 10 from this side and cut both sides. And the reason for that is, that's gonna give you a factory made edge to go along the bottom. That edge is gonna be smoother than you can make by cutting it yourself. Um, so this will be the bottom of one front and this will be the bottom of the other front and it's just going to work out way better. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these and then I'll show you how we attach it. Okay, so we have two of these and uh, I'm going to take you over to the cage and show you how we attach them. Okay guys, attaching these is real simple. What we're going to do is sit the wire on top of the rollout cage uh, and it should reach almost exactly across. You've got about half an inch on each side uh, overlap, about 49 inches. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put a screw in each corner. Um, and that's going to allow us to pull it tight and then all we're going to do is going to staple along. Okay guys, so we've got the front of our cage attached. I put some screws in on the sides, a couple of extra ones on the top, and then I just stapled along. That's gonna hold it in place. And then you've got a space right here for our egg roll down. Um, so for cutting the door, um, I'm gonna put a centralized door a little bit wider, uh, maybe 10 inches or so across. Um, you can cut the door however you want, but here's a quick tip. When you're cutting the door, if you want the door to be this wide, you want to make sure that you cut down at the center of the door so that you have a central point like this. So let me cut a few of these and I'll show you. So my door is going to be up to here, but I've left these parts right here hanging down. So the door is cut here, but the door is going to be this wide. And the reason is, is it allows you to fold these points up and in, up and in. And that means that you don't have to cut them off. It doesn't leave you a sharp edge right here. So you're not gonna scratch yourself um, when you're using the door. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my door and then I'll show you how we make the door. So to make my door, I need to make it one inch taller and two inches wider than the, the space that I have. So I have a six inch high door, which means I need to cut my wire seven inches high. And I've got a 10 inch wide door, which means I need to cut it 12 inches. This is gonna give me room to attach the door and also room to be able to latch the door. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that. Again, I'm gonna cut it the same way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it on the outside of the edges so that I have room to bend it over. Okay, so once you've got your door cut to size, um, it should overlap half an inch at the top, half an inch at the bottom, and a full inch on one side and an inch on the other. You're gonna get yourself a pair of J-kit pliers, and you can use cable ties or zip ties if you want to. Um, I have these pliers because I make wire cages that I sell. Um, if you're gonna be making a lot of cages, they're definitely worth the investment. And all you have to do is put your J-clip inside, and on the one side, half an inch above the top, you're gonna to just join them together, and it should sit nice and soft. And then you're gonna get another J clip and you're gonna do the same thing at the bottom. And then you're gonna take one more and put it in the middle. And then that should give you a nice opening door. And then what you can do is if you get a leash latch, um, like you'd use on a dog leash, you can just clip it on here and that's gonna hold your door closed. Quail aren't very strong, they can't push that open. 
um, you know, predators would have trouble with that as well. So there's your door, real, real simple. Um, the next step would be put on your feeders and put on your waterers. Um, I'm still waiting for some waterers to come in the mail right now, so I'm gonna actually use uh, just a water dish in here, the, the red plastic ones with the mason jar, um, just as a temporary solution. But I have a couple of J feeders that I can attach. So I'm gonna go get a J feeder on here. Okay, so once you've got your J feeder, you're just gonna go measure up one square above and that's the hole where it's gonna go. So you're gonna go ahead and cut that out. Magically, my hole is already cut out. And again, I cut on the inside so that I have these parts that I can bend back. And that's gonna leave me with no sharp edges. Um, very, very important you know, not to scratch yourself. You don't wanna scratch your quail. Um, it's gonna leave open wounds for infections. And as you can see, it's taken me a while to learn this. Um, I've been making cages for a while now and I never learned. Um, long sleeve shirt, gloves. Um, right now it's just hot today so that's why I'm not wearing a long sleeve shirt but most of the time I try to. But of course being in Hawaii our weather is uh, pretty warm most of the year round. We sit at around 74 to 84 most of the year. Um, coming into winter now cold for me is around 70 uh, sometimes at night it will get down to about 65 uh, but most of the year it's pretty hot so once you've got your space made the J feeder just fits inside and you just clip it on and again you can bend these parts back um, and it will make it more solid if you've got a predator problem you can flip it up and fill from the top so that's a J feeder installed water feeder will go on the other side again you've got different choices um, you've got the tippy cups, um, which go horizontal, they go on the outside of the cages. You've got the tippy cups that tip forward and backwards, they go on the inside of the cages. You've got drippers and you've got the little yellow cup with the pokey thing. Um, can't remember what it's called. Um, those ones work once you get the PVC installed. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of these and then I'll show you what it looks like when we're finished. Okay, there you go guys, um, one finished cage. I've got the fronts on, I've got the top on, I've got the doors in. All I've got to do is add two more J feeders and pick up another tray and then add my watering system. Um, I just need to grab some extra parts to finish that off, but other than that, the cage is done. We've got the top on it. Um, total build time was about two hours, uh, a little bit longer because I kept stopping the film. Um, but real, real simple to build. As I said, is anyone can do this. Uh, your local hardware store will have everything you need in one place. So I'm gonna get this moved into place and get it set up and then we'll get some quails in it and I'll show you that in my next video. Once again, this is Andrew from Aloha Quails. Thank you for watching and see you next time.